<laughs> Welcome to Afternoon Express. My name all is Judy right, D. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's a time for unity, for giving, for living well, and for being festive. No Monday blues here, only cause for celebration. Exactly. So first up today, we meet one of South Africa's most remarkable women. She is amazing. We're going to be bringing a classic style lesson from Coco Chanel into the 21st century. Accessories are the finishing touches on an outfit, and two style mavens share how to take a look from ordinary to amazing with just a few accessories. Plus, we've got gifts galore. We'll be sharing details of how you can win a brand new fridge. And of course, there's our daily giveaway. Now, we've been giving out 36,000 rands worth of prizes with the Clix ad Advent Calendar 2017. And we are on day 10, which means that there are only three prizes up for grabs, each to the value of 3,000 rand. All you have to do uh, to win is call in live on 021-430-9881, only when we say that the lines are open. Indeed, it's also going to be sweet nostalgia in the Afternoon Express kitchen today. Myself and Clem are going to be having lots of fun. I see there's a bit of main course, a bit of dessert this side. What you got planned? So there will be a rocky road, first of all. Uh -huh. My What's a rocky road? What's a rocky road? You're going to have to check it out later. But basically, it's everything that's good and great in the world combined with chocolate. Yum. Yeah. Because that's what dessert. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to be making some a beautiful dukkah. Ooh. What's dukkah? Do you know dukkah? is like a really cool spice. It's made out of like, a whole bunch of like spices ground up and together and you yeah. use that as a dip for uh -huh. things. And then we do the final challenge. Oh, is it the final challenge? We'll see. But we'll have another challenge today on the show because at the moment you're tied with Genie. It's 1-1. Ooh, okay. So what is the challenge going to entail? It's going to be the ultimate trifle challenge. Okay, so taking it way, way back on Afternoon Express today, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So let's kick off the show on the couch with our first guest. Mm -hmm. So when a book entitled Coconut hits the shelves, it was an immediate hit with reading audiences and won critical acclaim for a then unknown young writer named Kopano Matra Mabaso. Nakapano has gone on to become a doctor. Is, she's a Rhodes Scholar and Clarendon Scholar. She is a healthcare activist. And if you think that's not enough, her first two novels both won prestigious literary awards. Her new book is already nominated for a literary award, and she is an inspiration to women across South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you. Thanks, I have guys. to tell you, I, I can't remember how long ago, but it was about nine years ago. Yeah. Um, I went to go and stay at a friend's house and found this book on the side table and read it, and I read it in a day. I could not put it down. Oh, thank you. That's you are kind. amazing. How did the idea for Coconut come to you? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess when you're young, you kind of, you know, you know, you read these difficult books, Steve Buko, yeah. I Write What I Like, Animal Farm, and you start to find your own voice and your own consciousness. And I guess I was quite young when I started writing Coconut. I was trying to find my place as a young black woman in South yeah. Africa. And Coconut was just kind of an expression of those kind of grapplings and those difficult questions that one has. So you're saying you were quite young when you started writing yeah. Coconut. It's not like you're way old now, <laughs> no. so first of all. And then secondly, you wrote Coconut while you were doing your degree. Like you, you were writing your thesis, right? Yeah, Am so I correct? So Coconut, I was a medical student and um, period pain, I was working on my PhD thesis. I mean, aren't those like the highest pressure points of one's life? <laughs> How are you then able to just produce a novel? Sure, I mean, it's a long time in the making. And I mean, it was a little bit of a release. I think everyone has that, whether they bake or they exercise and writing was just that thing for me. Wow. Yeah. You know that saying that everyone has the exact same amount of hours in the day as Beyonce? My new thing is we've all got the same amount of hours in the day as, as Kapana. Kapana. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so then there, there was coconut, then spilt milk came about. What is spilt milk about? So I guess spilt milk was a little bit more of, I mean, and my writing is very, very self-indulgent. It's always kind of me working through my own stuff. No, but, but it's easy to read. It's actually yeah. so enjoyable to read. Really? It flows very well. Yeah. Wouldn't you say that most writing is self-indulgent? I mean, I think you have to work really hard to the point of exhaustion for a writer if you're going to try and not be self-indulgent no, sure. in your first couple of books. Sure. I mean, and I think for the authenticity, I mean, I think isn't that why we all love Adele? Because you can kind of feel her heartache yeah. in her music. Yeah. And I think I try and do the same thing in writing, that I try and be as vulnerable yeah. as possible. Do you think these books are all a little bit about you? <laughs> So, because I still want to know what spoke milk is about, but is it is it a part of you that you kind of um, releasing? I mean, I think you can't separate yourself from any kind of work yeah. that you try to do with integrity and truthfully. But I mean, I try not be lazy, and yeah, so not completely about myself, but I'm very sympathetic to the characters. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's very clear that you try not be lazy, and you are succeeding at that attempt. 
Well, you've just, I think you've just gotten back from England now where you were studying at Oxford and you were doing a, another degree in public health. Yes. How was that journey and what, what, was, what did you take from that? Yeah, so I mean, so we Oxford. actually got back, it feels like yesterday, but we actually got back last year. Um, and it was great. I mean, it was tough. It's mm, tough to sure. be away from home. It's tough to be foreign. Um, but my husband was with me and we had our baby there, our first child. So, I mean, there was wow. lots of great moments. Um, and the PhD was difficult. Um, and sort of almost there, not quite finished. But yeah, I mean, I think all sort of the best journeys in life are difficult and lots of growth and lots of learning. Yeah. Well, you're amazing and yeah. so inspirational. I want to be yeah. your best friend and keep you forever. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back to find out a bit more about Dr. Kupano Matwamaba. So literally success plus later in the show, you could make your festive season wishes come true with the Clicks Advent Calendar Giveaway. You could win daily cash and airtime prizes or a Toyota RAV4 when you enter the hashtag WayBetterTogether competition. Buy a one kilogram classic custard and a one liter crush together, have the barcodes from both products and the tool slip in hand, and dial star 120 star 5676 hash and follow the prompts. T's and C's apply and full competition details can be found on clover.co.za. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, and we are back on the couch with the sensational doctor and writer, Cabana. Now, I want to, I mean, your, your writing is just effortless, and you make it seem easy. And I really want everybody in South Africa now to go out and buy these books as Christmas presents because they are so yeah, good. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind just taking us through each of them and what they're about. So let's start with Coconut. So you've taken us pretty much through Coconut, right? Yeah. So we should probably kind go of. through Spit Milk and, and, and Curd Pen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll do what you want to do, Bunny. No, it's just with a, a short memory. Okay, there, so happening. Spilt Milk. Um, so Spilt Milk, I guess, was kind of the sort of questions of what happens after the milk has spilled. So what happens with the kind of new South Africa and the pains and the hurts that we have, what do we do about them? So it's kind of a working through that. 
Um, and yeah, imagining different worlds, but also kind of the pros and cons of the different worlds. And you've gotten awards for these two. What was it like receiving the, that, those honors? So actually, Coconut got both awards. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's, you know, I wrote Coconut not even knowing I could write. I didn't think I could write. So I mean, yeah, very affirming and humbling. Yeah. Um, but also scary because now you have an audience. And so the criticism, you kind of write now thinking, what are they going to say? So I think in some ways it stole that kind of naive. Do you get any kind of major criticism? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. And then how do are you Are you serious? Yeah. From like, okay, and is it from the literary world or is it from yeah. just from the reader? I mean, reader? I guess people... You know, people like stuff and sometimes they don't. So, I mean, I think with Coconut, I mean, I was 21, so I was reading everything. Now I'm just like, I don't care. Like, I write because yeah. I love it. And yeah. some will, it will land with some people and it yeah. won't. Um, and, that and that's been quite pain. period. So, so, in fact, period pain, I think, I felt so free because I kind of been through spilt milk, kind of second guessing myself, wondering what people would think. And then period pain, I think I was a little bit older. Um, so I feel like it's a very authentic novel. So that's just... Yeah, I guess the journey of a young South African woman who happens to be a doctor. No, not myself. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and it deals a lot with sort of gender-based violence and um, the heartbreaks. It, it happens in a hospital because that's kind of where society, kind of all the vulnerabilities come together at the yes. bedside. Um, but it's kind of an exploration of our current situation and where we so are. So what really fascinates me is the contrast of your two worlds and how you, you seem to straddle them so effortlessly. So on the one hand, you're in this very cutthroat industry that requires a lot of you, and you need, you need to be self-motivated in both. But it feels like, right, could, could, would I be correct in saying that writing is an outlet for you? Um, is that the place where you come to relax and just let yeah, everything go? I know, I do love my, so, I'm, so I've kind of, my career has moved a little bit. So I'm actually in public health now. But I mean, I think even in medicine, there are stories. You know, I mean, I think a good doctor takes time to actually listen to where you are. And sometimes what you're saying is not the real reason why mm. you're there. So I think I've always been fascinated with stories. Um, and I don't think I could do either because I've always felt that I want to live in the world so I can write about it. Mm. So I could never just live in my head. Yeah. Um, and so in many ways, kind of my public health work and sort of clinical, my, at least up until this point, the clinical work allowed me to be a better writer, I right. think. I know, like, you've written so much. Bonnie's written a book. I think it must be the most amazing thing. But what is your process? Because I think I, I'm trying to overthink everything. Yeah. Do you just sit behind a laptop and just write? Or do you plan out kind of your storyline yeah, and you then like write the structured stories? writer? No, not at all. And in fact, I think the best advice I got, which is a little bit crude, was like, just vomit on the page and clean it up afterwards. It's just yeah. like lots of raw emotion. And then, because I think that's how you kind of know you're being honest. Yeah. Um, and then after maybe months, go back to it and then kind of clean it up. But I try not kind of right with the end product in mind because then yeah. it just comes across a little bit too artificial yeah, yeah. okay i hope everybody in south africa Absolutely. goes and buys all three Absolutely. books and i mean i've got that one so i want these two under my christmas <laughs> and i'm also year. so like I, i'm so glad that you're <laughs> that you're in public health as well like it's just lovely to know that there are people like you in public health doing such thank, amazing thank as well you, thank you, so you much. are amazing thank you so much for being on the show <laughs> thank you <laughs> Clover Classic, the creamy taste that takes you back. Made with love by Clover. Made with love by Clover. Not that I need any more dessert, but what's more festive than a trifle at the center of your Christmas dessert table? Laid with custard, cake and fruit, it's the perfect dessert this holiday season. Well, seeing as we have been loving the classic challenges, Clem has decided to throw in another using the delicious creamy flavors of Clover Classic Custard. Found in most South African cupboards, Christmas just wouldn't be the same without Clover Classic Custard. Clem, talk us through how this challenge is going to work before I invite my opponent in. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken Clover Classic Custard, combined it with malted chocolate to create the most decadent custard ever. And you know, because you've been snacking since you walked in today. <laughs> but the reason I had to set up this challenge is because the scores are tied. Dan won for the piping challenge, Jeannie won for the Sunday building challenge. All so right. I need to get Jeannie in here, we need to settle this. Right, Jeannie, opponent number one. Come Woo! into the loft kitchen. Woo! She's come Woo! ready. She's ready, oh, she's oh. already ready with her little <laughs> okay. cap on. So here's the rules. It just needs to look beautifully <laughs> presented and you have to incorporate all the ingredients in front of you. Keep it neat, keep it tidy. You've got two minutes. Okay. Okay, and Go! Oh wow! Triple <laughs> challenge on the way. 
All right, I'm gonna start with something interesting. Full rules again. I sort of reiterate: no biting, no scratching, no pulling air, no calling bad names. Can you snack? Is that is that? You're allowed to snack. Actually, that's actually maybe bonus points if you snack while you're building, because that shows skill. And by the way, you also get marked on your your work area at the end. It was tidy or not? Oh no, but Clem, that. Uh, I'm just saying, let's go talk through our ingredients. So we've got some beautiful crumbly flaky chocolates, we've got some blueberries, cherries, and they haven't been pitted. That's the that's a tricky, tricky ingredient, okay? okay? Are you gonna take the pits out or not? Or is it just gonna be a topping? It's just gonna be a topping for mine. Mine, I'm gonna try and see if I can squeeze this Dad, in. have you used your chocolate custard yet? Um, no. Okay. Wait. Oh, Jeannie has used all of the ingredients. It's looking good. Mine's, okay. mine's gonna be done soon, don't you worry. All right. Right, Ooh, I'm okay. totally so, gonna win this. It would not be fair if I judged which one of no, you Genie's won. Genie's looks terrible. Because we all know I have a favorite in the kitchen. It's Genie. Yeah, so <laughs> we have to leave it to the viewers, right? So at the end, our viewers are gonna actually decide who wins. And that's gonna be the final challenge of the year. <laughs> are we seeing what I'm creating here? Okay, mine's done and dusted. I'm laying mine forward for judgment. Okay. Do you have a name for your creation? Mine is gonna be called the Black Wonder. Okay. Choc the chocolatey, the chocolatey, Thunder. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mine is called the J Dizzle. Uh, yes. <laughs> because it's really amazing. The shizzle. And delicious. I just put a little swizzle yeah. in there. <laughs> Fantastic. Obviously, if you guys want to get to, to see how this trifle was supposed to be made, here's a quick recap. details for how to make this trifle on your mobile device you sms the keyword clover to double three six five oh at a cost of one rand fifty remembering your free sms's don't apply how delicious does mine look get voting now that was certainly <laughs> the most delicious challenge that we've ever had on the show and is the one to try with the family now it's time to bring clover home for the holidays with these amazing clover hampers to be won all you have to do is head to over to our Facebook page and comment on the Clover Classic Custard post with the answer to this very simple question. Who do you think made the winning Clover Classic Custard trifle? Me. After the break, we go from food to fashion as style bloggers share how to make a statement with accessories. Plus, it's the last few days of the Clix Advent Calendar giveaway, so keep your our number on speed dial and obviously wait for us to announce that the lines are open. The number is 021 We'll make that announcement a little bit later on so stay tuned and please remember to vote no. for my trifle thank you no mine clover classic the creamy taste that takes you back made with love by clover made with love by clover
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, accessories are the exclamation point on any outfit. And with the festive season in full swing, whether it's a spoil yourself kind of day or treating yourself to loved ones or treating your loved ones this Christmas, the only question you have to ask is which style for which personality. Bloggers Jade Robertson and Nabila Stahi lend a stylish hand in what to pick for the girl who loves a statement look or for the one who prefers a minimalist look. Hi everyone, I'm Jade from Just Jade Blog. I'm a blogger and social media influencer. Hi, my name is Nabila, Swami model and influencer. I'm here at Clears today to challenge Nabila in the Clears Accessory Challenge. I love accessories. I think that they complete every look. I wear them every day and they are definitely key items in everyone's wardrobe. Every girl needs that extra bit of sparkle just to make her feel more beautiful. Life's too short for boring accessories and with the festive season in full swing, these stylish ladies have great insight for spoiling your loved ones with trendy style. I feel that jewellery is important because it's a way people express themselves, whether it's women or men, it doesn't really matter. I think jewellery is a key element to any outfit and it just puts the whole look together. So a pair of earrings can easily just make you look good from here to there in like two minutes. This stylish duo has five minutes to put together accessories as a statement look and a minimalist look. When I got chosen to do the statement pieces, I was super excited. It's my comfort zone, so it was easy. It's what I look for naturally. So whenever I come to Claire's, I always make a stop off at the cell phone case wall. I really love them. I change them. With every outfit. I really love the glitzy ones as they attract so much attention. This is really one of my favorite. It has like a mermaid style and it's really statementy. So I'm a statement person. I love things that are blingy, big, and anything that kind of attracts people's attention. How cute is this? Like, this is just the cutest thing ever. This is perfect for a little gift, a shock for listening that it's Christmas for your sister, your cousin, your best friend. I promise you she'd love it. Who I spot one. I think this is the one I'm going for today. How amazing is this? I chose the cell phone cover because it's rose gold. You must have some rose gold nowadays. I love that it's sparkly as well. I love everything sparkly and also reminded me of seashells, so it's really beautiful. Thank goodness I got chosen to do the minimalistic look. It's right up my alley. Oh, this is so cute and I love the pop of color. This marble detail on this phone case is perfect and it would be super cute as a gift. But this is more for me. The phone cover I chose was see-through and I love the fact that it has a little pom-pom detail because I think that pom-pom is so unseen at the moment. Accessories, I love gold and silver. Gold and silver is always easy to wear. It basically goes with absolutely anything. My game plan was to look for the biggest pieces first. So the things that literally stood out the most for me, I was going to grab it and try and make them work. I think these are my favourite today. These are quite cool. The first item was basically my favourite one. It was the statement earrings. So they had chains dripping at the bottom of them and they had these really big stones in them, which I love. Very much a statement piece. You can wear this with or without a necklace, with some bracelets, it doesn't matter. It's sure to attract some attention. Oh, I love this chunky bracelet. I chose the bracelet because I think that it's a statement, but it's also minimal because there's no color on it. It's just the broad, chunky silver bracelet. So you can literally wear this bracelet just with a ring and maybe a dainty necklace and it will look so cute. When it comes to bracelets, I'm not that big on them, but they're always cool to wear. They really add something extra. Yeah, I went for two chain bracelets. What I loved about those was the chain detail. They weren't too chunky or too heavy, but they really brought the whole look together. I love how dainty and small the shape on this necklace is. Perfect. I love the necklace because it's plain, it's simple, it's knocked over the top and it's me. So now I'm looking for a neck piece, something that's simple that will work with this. But like I said, I'm always looking for something more, something extra, something that really stands out. Why I love statement pieces is because it's it's something that just kind of brings your outfit together so you can be wearing something super simple, put on a cool pair of earrings and like your look is like ready to go. Hmm, I think a choker would work. How amazing is this choker? The choker is really cool because chokers are very much on trend. Um, it's been on trend for a while and people are still loving it. I don't see it going anywhere. I went for a gold choker. So once again, goes with absolutely anything, day or night. You get them in different colors, pastels, gold, silver, black, white, whatever you like. You can't go wrong with the statement piece. I need a pair of hoops. Hoops are definitely in this season. You can wear it with your hair up, hair down, doesn't matter, literally goes with anything. I can't say that there's much don'ts when, it's, when you buy for a statement girl. I think that anything bold, beautiful and bright and colorful works really well. 
or jeweled up, it doesn't really matter. Stay away from really skimpy necklaces, obviously that 